All right. Welcome to Miss Walker's um, mid-morning um, story time. Today is Thursday, April 23rd, and we are going to start a new book today, a new chapter book for you guys. I thought we would try Mercy Watson. Actually, hold on a second. Let me try that. Let me share my screen the other way. It works a little better for this one. Here we go. Here we go. Entire screen. Oh, Miss Walker isn't. Okay, here we go. All right. So we are going to read the first book in the Mercy Watson series. This series was written by Kate DeCamillo. She also wrote several other great chapter books that big kids like to read. Um, but she also wrote these great books about a pig. So this one is called Mercy Watson to the Rescue. Chapter one. Mr. and Mrs. Watson have a pig named Mercy. Each night they see Mercy to sleep. Bright, bright is the morning sun and sing Mr. and Mrs. Watson. But brighter still is our darling one. Dark, dark is the night coming night. But oh, our mercy shines so bright. This song makes Mercy feel warm inside as if she has eaten hot toast with a great deal of butter on it. Mercy likes hot toast with a great deal of butter on it. But when Mr. and Mrs. Watson kiss her goodnight and turn off the light, Mercy's room becomes dark, very dark. Mercy does not feel warm and buttery toasty inside anymore. She feels afraid. One night after Mr. and Mrs. Watson sang their song about the sun, kissed Mercy goodnight and turned off the light, Mercy decided something. She decided that she would be much happier if she wasn't sleeping alone. And so Mercy got out of her bed and went and got in bed with Mr. and Mrs. Watson. She snuggled up between them. Mercy felt warm inside as if she had eaten hot toast with a great deal of butter on it. Check your mics again, guys. It sounds like somebody's accidentally got clicked on. Chapter two. Mr. Watson and Mrs. Watson and Mercy were all in bed together and they were all dreaming. Mr. Watson was dreaming of driving a car very fast. Vroom, said Mr. Watson in his sleep. Vroom, vroom. Mrs. Watson was dreaming of buttering hot toast for Mercy. She buttered one piece and then another piece and then another. Have some more, dear Mrs. Watson said in her sleep. Eat up. Yum, yum. Mercy was dreaming about hot buttered toast, too. In Mercy's dream, the hot buttered toast was piled high on her favorite blue plate. Mrs. Watson was buttering still more. It was an excellent dream. Mr. Watson said, vroom, vroom. Mrs. Watson said, have some more, dear. Mercy snuffed and chewed in her sleep. Mr. Watson and Mrs. Watson and Mercy were all so busy sleeping that they did not hear the bed creak. They were so busy dreaming, they did not hear the floor moan. Chapter three. Boom. A hole opened up under the Watson's bed. Crack. The Watson's bed fell into the hole. Mrs. Watson woke, Mr. Watson woke up, Mrs. Watson woke up, and Mercy woke up. What the said Mr. Watson. Oink, said Mercy. It's an earthquake, shouted Mrs. Watson. It's the end of the world. Nonsense, said Mr. Watson, but he did not sound very sure. He sounded frightened. Mercy, however, was not frightened. Mercy was hungry. Oink, said Mercy again. She moved to the end of the bed. Boom, crack. The bed fell a little farther into the hole in the floor. Don't move, shouted Mr. Watson. Whatever you do, don't move. Mr. Watson and Mrs. Watson and Mercy held very still. Mrs. Watson started to cry. I know exactly what we must do, said Mr. Watson. We must call the fire department. 
they will rescue us. But you said we should not move, said Mrs. Watson. How can we call the fire department if we can't move? Mercy recalled her lovely toast-filled dream. She wondered if there was toast in the kitchen. While Mr. Watson and Mrs. Watson were arguing, Mercy hopped off the bed. Boom, crack. Look, said Mrs. Watson, Mercy has escaped. She's going to find help, said Mr. Watson. She's going to bring alert the fire department. Mercy left the bedroom at a gallop. She was in a hurry. She was on her way to the kitchen. She was looking for some toast. Chapter four. In the kitchen. In the kitchen, Mercy sniffed the table. She sniffed the kitchen counter. She sniffed the floor, but there was no toast. There was not even a crumb of toast. Mercy's stomach growled in disappointment. Boom, crack. Help us, Mercy, Mrs. Watson called. Mercy thought very hard. Where could she get a snack? Then the answer came to her. Baby Lincoln always had sugar cookies. Baby Lincoln lived next door, and Baby Lincoln liked to share. Mercy took the kitchen doorknob in her mouth. She turned it. Help! Mrs. Watson called again. Sugar cookies, thought Mercy, and she stepped outside. Chapter five. The Lincoln sisters live next door to the Watsons. Eugenia Lincoln is the older sister, and she has many opinions. One of Eugenia's opinions is that pigs should not live in houses. Eugenia often says, listen closely to me, baby, baby. Pigs are farm animals. They belong on farms. They do not belong in houses. Yes, sister, said baby. Baby Lincoln is the younger sister. She was the baby in the family. Baby agrees with everything Eugenia says. It is easier that way. But secretly, baby has an opinion of her own. Baby's opinion is that mercy is good company. At the Lincoln sister's house, mercy knocked, looked into baby's room. She could see baby sleeping and put her snout up against the window pane. Oink, said Mercy, but Baby did not he hear her. Snuffle, said Mercy, but Baby did not wake up. Mercy tapped her hoof against the window, and Baby sat straight up in bed. Who's there, she said. Baby Mercy's snout pressed up against the window. A monster, shouted Baby. A monster at my window. Mercy shook her head. Sister, shouted Baby. Help, help, a monster. Eugenia woke up. She did not put in her teeth and did not put on her glasses. Eugenia went straight to the phone and called the fire department. There's a crisis of uncertain nature at 52 Decalu Drive, said Eugenia Lincoln. Come immediately. And then Eugenia put on a robe and rushed to baby's room. In her opinion, Eugenia Lincoln was very good in a crisis. Chapter 6. What's going on in here? asked Eugenia. There's a monster outside, baby, said baby, and pointed the window. That's not a monster, said Eugenia. That's the pig from next door. Mercy, said baby. Eugenia shook her fist. In my opinion, said Eugenia, pigs belong on farms. Yes, sister, said baby. Eugenia tapped a knuckle against the window. Get out of my yard, she shouted at Mercy. Oh, sister, said baby, don't yell at her. You'll hurt her feelings. She doesn't have feelings, sound, shouted Eugenia. She's a pig. Oh, said baby. Then I'm, sh I'm sure you're wrong, dear. I am not wrong, Eugenia shouted. I am not wrong. I know a pig when I see one. Eugenia scoffed and she pressed her nose against the window pane. Mercy stared at Eugenia and Eugenia stared at Mercy. Pig, shouted Eugenia, and she turned and ran out of baby's room. Oh, dear, said baby Lincoln. Oh, my. Chapter seven. Eugenia ran towards Mercy. Mercy's heart beat faster. There was going to be a chase. Mercy loved to chase. She let Eugenia get very close to her. Oink, said Mercy, dashing away. Get out of my yard, shouted Eugenia. Oink, oink, said Mercy. She ran in circles. She kicked up her heels. No pigs allowed, shouted Eugenia. Oh, sister, said baby. Be careful. The siren wailed and the fire drop parked into Lincoln sister's driveway. Ned and Lorenzo, L L L Ned and Lorenzo got out of the truck. Do you think that's the emergency? Ned asked. Couldn't be, said Lorenzo. Ned and Lorenzo sighed. You never know with this job, said Lorenzo. You're right. You never know, said Ned. 
Chapter 8. Ma'am, said Lorenzo to Baby, did you call the fire department? Oh, dear, I did not. But Eugenia may have called. Who is Eugenia? My sister, said Baby. Is that her? asked Lorenzo, the one chasing the pig. Yes, that's her. Baby, Ned, and Lorenzo watched Eugenia chasing Mercy through the yard. Lorenzo cleared her throat. What was the mercy, the emergency exactly, asked Ned. I thought I saw a monster at my bedroom window, said Baby, but it wasn't a monster. It was Mercy. Mercy, said Lorenzo. The pig, said Baby, the pig who lives next door. I see. Eugenia does not care for Mercy, said Baby. In her opinion, pigs belong on farms. There's something to be said for that opinion, said Lorenzo. Ned nodded. Help, shouted a faraway voice. Help, help, help us. Do you hear that, said Ned? Somebody's in trouble, said Lorenzo. Let's go. Chapter nine, Ned and Lorenzo ran towards the call for help. They went into the Watson's house. Help! Ned and Lorenzo looked up. They saw the bed hanging out of the ceiling. They saw Mr. and Mrs. Watson holding onto the bed for dear life. She, we're saved, cried Mrs. Watson. Of course we're saved, said Mr. Watson. Mercy has alerted the fire department. She's amazing, said Mrs. Watson. She's unbelievable. She's a porky, a, a pork, pork, pork rind wonder, said Mr. Watson. I think somebody's mic's gotten turned on accidentally. Click it off for me. Ned and Lorenzo ran upstairs. They picked up Mr. and Mrs. Watson. The Watson's bed sighed loudly and crashed all the way to the floor. Boom. Mr. Watson looked at the hole where the bed used to be. I have always believed very firmly in the fire department, said Mr. Watson, as have I, said Mrs. Watson, as have I. From outside the Watson's house came a squeal. Gotcha, shouted Eugenia. Chapter 10. Ned and Lorenzo and Mr. and Mrs. Watson went outside. Eugenia was sitting on the ground. Her arms were wrapped around Mercy's neck. Her neck was resting on Mercy's back and Eugenia was breathing loudly. This pig, she said, was on my property. We'd prefer that you did not call her a pig, said Mrs. Watson. We would prefer that you would call her a pork, a porcine wonder, said Mr. Watson. After all, she did save us. She's a hero. She's a pig, said Eugenia. She started to cry. There, there, sister, said baby. She bent over and patted Eugenia on the back. Mercy yawned. She was very tired. I guess that's it, said Ned. Yep, said Lorenzo. Our work here is done. Wait, said Mrs. Watson. It's almost time for breakfast. Oink, said Mercy. That's right. Breakfast, said Mrs. Watson. She kissed the head, top of Mercy's head. She looked up at the fireman. Do you boys like toast? Chapter 11. In the Watson's house, around the Watson's table, sat Eugenia Lincoln, Baby Lincoln, Mr. Watson, Mrs. Watson, Ned, and Lorenzo. Mercy, and Mercy, of course, she was at the head of the table in the seat of honor. And in front of her, on her favorite blue plate, was a tall stack of hot butter toast. Toast to Mercy, said Mr. Watson, holding up a glass of orange juice. A toast to our darling, our dear, said Mrs. Watson. A toast to Mercy, said Baby. See the picture? Eugenia does not look happy there, does she? In my opinion, said Eugenia, pigs should not be toasted. In my opinion, pigs do not belong at the kitchen table. To our hero, said Mr. Watson, where would we be without mercy? Yes, said Mrs. Watson, who would have saved us? I can't imagine, said Ned. Me either, said Lorenzo. They clinked their glasses. Mercy had another piece of toast. Chapter 12. Outside of the Watson's house, the sun was rising. First, the sun was red, then it was orange. It rose higher and higher inside the Watson's house. Mercy was lying on the couch. She was getting ready to take a nap. Bright, bright is the morning sun, sang Mr. and Mrs. Watson together, and brighter still is our porcupine wonder. Mercy smiled. She closed her eyes, and she was asleep before Mr. and Mrs. Watson could finish the song. That is the end of our story. It was pretty short and sweet, wasn't it? All right.